just uh, wanted to give you a quick little thing about this week's episode. I goofed up on the sound a little bit and the the uh, the music in the background until about 10 minutes to 11 minutes in is louder than intended. So you might have a little bit of issue hearing Greg and I talk. So given that fact, I just want to give you a little warning. Also, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving if you're in America and uh, have a good one. Enjoy the episode. And none of you heard that. <laughs> the mute didn't go off. Darn it. Hey everybody, doing the Pipe Pirate here. Editing in post, not really because I've got music playing in the background already, so everything stays. And we're here to talk finally after all this time. Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 6. And here with me, as always, to talk all things Pipe and Mandalorian at least at this point, is Greg the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Uh, I'm doing okay now. Now that uh, this week's almost over. How about you? Well, we never got really into off, off air how my week has been, but it's not really been that bad, but it's been busy. You know, we thought after we had Elizabeth at the end of October that, you know, things were going to slow down. And... They didn't, of course. You know, doctor's appointments coming out the wazoo um, for both my wife and my daughter and my son and my other son and my other son. I'm the only one who hasn't seen a doctor since, you know, you know, like maybe five years before COVID happened. But it is what it is. I'm apparently the healthier one. And, uh, you know, when you got kids that you're trying to figure out have allergies, um, the ADHD concerns, and one just keeps falling on his face. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, a, just the typical stuff as your kids get older. You'll get there. Yes, I, um, I look forward to it. So, tonight, looks like you are smoking one of my favorite style Missouri Mearsham cobs. Uh, looks like yes. you're smoking a cob it. Yes, yes. It's uh, about a year ago that I picked this up at the Missouri Meerschaum uh, factory. I uh, can't believe it's been uh, that long since I have. Uh, but yeah, you know, I figured since I was on the you know, recording tonight that I would uh, make this pipe, which I know you're a big fan of it. And uh, the one that I'm smoking is uh, Rat Ray's uh, Bad Piper's Dream, mixed in with a little bit of... Um, the Tinderbox's uh, Sherlock's Choice, which is a nice uh, English one. How about you? Well, today I have out uh, my Morgan Bones at the Billiard. And in it, I am smoking some Mac Baron Crumble Cake English number one. Nice. Courtesy of the now defunct Virtual Pipe Club. It's too bad yes, that went indeed. down. Yes. Yes. That was one of the really good ones. Actually, uh, I also have a pipe full of uh, East Farthing out here uh, that I'm going to enjoy later. Don't know if I'm going to get to this to the second pipe or not. We'll we'll see how how the evening progresses. But. Uh, the main story tonight is Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 6, the one that I haven't been able to watch for three weeks because my kids haven't been able to let me. So I took, I yes. took some, some time Sunday night after everybody went to bed, and I finally watched it again for the third time. One of my favorite episodes of Season 1, now that I've watched it again, because I just love a good prison break and twists and turns and whatnot. It was a great it was a great side episode. It really doesn't have much to do with the overall plot. But it was a great episode nonetheless. Yes. No, th I think this is uh, my favorite episode so far of uh, the entire season. It was just uh, great all great all around. So 
this episode, we, we start out seeing the Mandalorian and the Razor Crest, you know, landing on a space station of sorts. He's taken on a job. And do you have the, happen to have the, uh, the the description of the episode up there in front of you, Greg? Because I don't. The IMDb description? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> that sounds like it's going to be a fun one. Uh, the Mandalorian is part of a crew of mercenaries bringing a convict, for a, a, a convict from a prison ship. So that is, yes, that is the description for the episode. I should have just kept on going with what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, basically, well. basically his, he has an old contact um, that uh, by, name, uh, by the name of Ran, and he has essentially assembled a team of specialists to break a prisoner out of a uh, New Republic uh, prison ship that's entirely piloted by droids. And so each, you know, as per these type of, like, you know, stories such as, like, uh, you know, Inception or uh, uh, similar stories like that. Each person kind of has a role in taking and what to do with uh, with this mission. Yep. Mandalor- the Mandalorian is looks like he's the lock guy and providing the ride in this particular crew. Yeah. Now they have a droid pilot by the name of Zero. Uh, an Imperial sharpshooter uh, by the name of Mayfield, uh, a Devaorian strongman named Berg, and a uh, knife-wielding uh, assassin-type type lady uh, by the name of Zian. Her species, for those of you who are totally nerdy, is Twilight. Yeah, I wasn't going to try that. <laughs> um, don't worry it's just because I've been re-watching Star Wars Rebels I would have never been able to pull that out of my butt any other time mm-hmm. it's just that one of the main characters also happens to be of that species and it is mentioned multiple times yeah no that was a it was a species that I had seen before but uh, not from that but just in general but I just so like when she popped up I was like oh you'll you know, I I know it. Uh, you look from, you very look very Star Wars ish. But yeah, it's it's a great episode. I mean, all around, it's like it's one of those one off episodes that doesn't have anything to do with the really the, with the main plot, other than you know the child gets into a little bit of trouble and he saves him again. But that's really about it. Like, just child is there, and mm-hmm. just, and then he's in his sleep or in the in the cargo hold or whatever he's doing the whole episode. You only see him like for maybe a total of five minutes the whole 30, 40 minute episode. Yeah, and uh, essentially, the, this whole episode is you uh, is seeing how they all work how you know can these this group of people uh, di- of uh, diverse backgrounds and abilities uh, work to free this prisoner uh, can they uh, out of this uh, difficult prison to break out it's not the well it's not the most difficult there's enough there that uh, it's it's pretty tricky it's not going to be you know you couldn't really necessarily do it on your own no. Um, and so the fun was essentially seeing how they all work together and also seeing how they would uh, betray the Mandalorian which you knew was going to eventually happen yeah they didn't play fast and loose with letting the secret out but you could tell something was going on behind the scenes just little things here and there between the three in the crew Mm -hmm. yeah I mean 
Berg, you never really got the sense of, uh, th there was no real kind of like, uh, he, he was just kind of like aggressive that entire time. You know, you couldn't really reason with him. Um, Zero kind of had that, the droid had, you knew like the moment that um, the video, uh, the uh, hologram, that pop message that popped up, uh, you knew that was going to play a role in the betrayal. Uh, there was some sort of history between uh, Zian and uh, and the Mandalorian, and uh, I which uh, of all the relationships, I thought that one was the most fun. Uh, but I did also like Mayfield a lot. With Mayfield, it didn't seem like it was just, it was like personal at all, like it was with Azean. It was more of just kind of like, uh, you know, this is this is a mission, you're just in the way type of thing. Yeah, one of those things, this is just the job. I've been hired to do this. He was in on the whole betrayal, like from mm -hmm. the beginning, obviously. But, you know, he was hired to do a job and he did it. That That's what it was with him. That's all it was. Yeah, whereas with Berg, there was more of like a chip on his shoulder, you know, wanting to prove that he was better than the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, with Zian, there was uh, that, that the past there that uh, was interfering uh, with that. And of course, you know, the, the person that they're there to rescue is her brother. Yep. Mm hmm. Um, uh, but I, I will say, like, I I really did enjoy the scenes where the, all the characters were kind of forced to, to work together. Uh, but it, it really showed, and really this episode, I feel, <laughs> the, the, the subtitle that I would give this episode is Don't Mess With The Mandalorian. Because as, uh, you know, these were all very formidable foes. And together they probably could have defeated him, but because the Mandalorian got to take them all on kind of essentially one at the time, one at a time for the most part, it, he essentially became Batman. Yeah. And yeah. That's a good way to put it. Took them all out. Yeah. Took them all out one by one. That's a good way to put it. Mandalorians, the Batman of Star Trek or Star Wars. There is no Batman of Star Trek. I can't think of a character on Star Trek that you could equate to Batman. Not even close. No. Yeah, but the the yeah. Now the Mandalorian was very impressive with, with uh, in this episode. I uh, it was fun watching him take take people down. It was fun. And he wasn't taking people down necessarily. His first big fight scene was against prisoner guard droids. Yes. Yeah, no, uh, that was that was actually, I think, probably one of the more impressive moments in the whole episode. Fighting robots are great. It, it can keep, especially for television, it keeps your rating down. Mm -hmm. Because... Nobody really cares about a little bit of spilled oil. Right. Damn flies. I don't know about where you're at, but it's been unseasonably warm here lately. And I'm getting a resurgence of house flies. It's kind of been back and forth here. Like we've had some really cold and windy days. And then, uh, like today, it was a bit warmer. Like it, it got up into, I think, the lower 60s. Yeah, I was taking some garbage out and I noticed, like, just running out to the garbage and uh, I was in my t shirt and I was not cold. I could have stayed outside mm -hmm. for a while in my, just in my t shirt and been fine. I'm actually only wearing this hoodie right now, not because it's cold in here, because I got the window open just because this shirt's white and it's washing out a little mm -hmm. bit, so just solving a problem. Yeah. 
But with it on, I'm a little warm, let me tell you. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, with this episode, I, I have to say, I do appreciate, though, that uh, he doesn't just take them all out uh, easily. Like, he does mm -hmm. have to work for it for each one. So it does at least show why each character had been hired to be part of this crew. They were all very competent. It's just that the Mandalorian was just a bit better than each one of them. Yes, definitely just a bit better. I, I really enjoyed the um, one scene between uh, Zeon and the Mando when she's going after him with the knives and throwing those knives and he's blocking them just as fast as she's throwing them. Getting hit once in a while in the Beskar. But uh, overall, he was a match strike for strike with those knives. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in contrast to for like the whole, uh, you know, keeping the ratings down uh, by fighting robots, uh, it's probably it was a good thing that they cut away from uh, the ending of his fight with the uh, um, with Bird, because otherwise it would have been a uh, pretty nasty looking scene <laughs> getting uh, uh, getting him kind of like uh, crushed in the door at the security area. But he wasn't really crushed. He was in the prison cell at the end with a big headache and only two broken horns. Did I miss that? Yeah, he did. I guess so. <laughs> he, was, he, he wasn't okay. dead. He was still there. Because he raced up and touched his horns. Because they were sensitive. Okay. Gotcha. Huh. Is there like a stinger at the end of each episode or something? I'm not familiar with that term in regards to TV shows. I'm more familiar with that term in regards to pipes. So right. I don't know what you mean um, by stinger. Like uh, something shown after the credits. No. Okay. Hmm. I will have to check that out then. That was shown after he flew away and the X-Wings came in and blew up the station. Yeah, that was the last that I remembered of the episode. You must have had to, for some reason, leave the episode a few minutes, like just a few seconds early or something like that, because they did show them. Okay, were all the characters there? Yep, all three of them. Okay, so Mayfield, uh, Berg, and uh, Zion? Yes, they are now spending their days in a luxurious New Republic prison, getting their nice square three meals a day, and the luxurious platform bed that, you know, will straighten your spine. Mm -hmm. I didn't no, actually I, mean I didn't... go into I didn't actually mean to go into tour guide mode there for a minute, but yeah. <laughs> I did enjoy the, the end of the episode uh, where the Mandalorian comes to collect and, and Ram goes like, where is everybody? And you, uh, and he, uh, the Mandalorian was like, uh, you, know, you know, not to ask questions. The policy is like, no questions yeah, asked. Yeah. That it is. Yeah, I enjoyed that exchange. And then you think he's getting away, but no, there's finally, there's the last, uh, person to turn on him which then turns into all oh, the Mandalorian already kind of figured that out and put the tracker on uh, on Quinn on Quinn and uh, which since we haven't mentioned it before is the Twi'lek brother of Zion who or Zion or whatever her name is back in the mm -hmm. prison ship he, he was the he was the rescue rescuee which that is an interesting choice of a name for that particular character Quinn Mm -hmm. It is so not alien. So it's spelled Q I N. So uh, it's, I, I, I don't care. Quinn. I don't. I don't care how it's spelled. Really. Yeah. No. It, no. No. It's uh, Quinn. It's... 
doesn't sound alien to my ear. So, yeah. Who knows? Although, um, well, Zero is kind of a. If I have to criticize anything, I do think Zero is kind of like a, a very generic robot name. And then, uh, uh, the Imperial shooter named Mayfield. That, you know, that kind of sounds like a carpet store. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, but, I mean, it, it didn't seem necessarily Star Wars ish, but it's okay. Like they're they're passable. Oh yeah, I, I I don't have any problem with the episode. I just didn't think that was a very alien name to give this character. Yeah. Who is blue okay. with big hangy off things on his head. Needed like a, an apostrophe somewhere in his name. Sure, that would work. Like his sister. But um, I did enjoy also the uh, moments in the ship where the, uh, where, you know, the child was trying to keep out of sight from uh, Zero, the droid. Yes. That was an interesting little little play there. There's really not that many places to hide on Mando's ship. But they did a good job of a little hide and seek mm -hmm. between Zero and the child. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not 100% sure why Zero went after the child with his rifle because there was nothing in the message that he hollow message that he played back indicating that the quarry that was being talked of was the child right unless uh, he knew more about the uh, everything going on than, was, than what was said in the episode but again that's you know it's not I, our job to fill in the yeah no and it's not worth speculating on that either because there's there's there'd be no payoff to that anyway because zero is now defunct yes although spoiler yeah. a little, little small minor spoiler he will make an, an appearance in season two hmm. um one other thing i wanted to highlight was uh I, I really enjoyed the whole um, the ride from the ride, the ride to the um, prison in, in the Mandalorian ship where you're getting bits and pieces of like all the characters personalities mm -hmm. yeah and was, then there's the yeah. moment and then oh, and then there's the moment of uh, the revealing of uh, the child all of a sudden and then there was just this question of like okay now that they know about the child you know you knew that wasn't a good thing that he was seen they are just wondering kind of like okay where is this all kind of headed yeah but it seems that there was no interest in the child in any kind of reward sense it's not like they didn't seem to to know that child was the real prize here right so it was just one of those hey that like Mayfield's reaction what is that is that a pet <laughs> I mean okay yeah no that was funny I think my all time favorite part of this episode and it's been ever since I first saw it is when Zero sitting there ready to do whatever he's going to do, raises his rifle, the child gets ready to use the force, puts his hand up, closes his eyes, and then Mando comes up and shoots Zero from behind, and the child opens his eyes, and looks at his hand like, what? That's not what I was trying to do. <laughs> yeah, great, uh, you know, silent, uh, silent acting there. Very much so. Okay. I think that, uh, I mean, that covers basically my thoughts for the episode. 
Mine too. You. Mine too, actually. It's uh, one of those episodes that it just doesn't need much to talk about. It's pretty enjoyable all around, especially for a one-off. Because mm-hmm. in a series that it sees first season only has eight episodes, and we're looking at about the same amount in season two, from my understanding. To do a one-off episode like that, you're taking a risk, but they pulled it off. Mm-hmm. They absolutely pulled it off. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I think uh, I'm in full agreement. This is be a good time when one of our shorter Mandalorian talks to end it, because there's not much else to say. Yeah. So... That being the case, if you want to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter, Instagram, pretty much anywhere as at DRAllen201. The show, of course, on Twitter is at Syndicated Pipe. And Greg, where can they find you? And you can find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper. You can also find me on Instagram at the Badger Piper. And if all of that is just too complicated for you and or you just don't want to do it for whatever reason, you do you. You can always send us an email at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Our recycled flashpoint, flash time, whatever we used to call that thing, email. Plus, you can also find us right here on YouTube. Yes. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you'll be notified as soon as our latest video uploads. Uh, I know Dave's been doing a lot of fun stuff uh, with live streams here and there. Uh, so uh, be have that uh, checked off so that you can be notified in case he decides to do some streaming. Uh, also be sure to check out the podcast version of the show available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And I forgot what the next part of the script is. Darn it. Oh, well. Um, any final thoughts, Greg? Uh, I, uh, again, fun episode. Uh, being a dad is hard. That is true. Being a dad is hard. <laughs> Blowing your smoke, smoke right into your camera so it obscures your face. If you're making videos, not, not, not recommended. Unless, uh, you're going to disappear very quick off camera and you're using that as a diversion tactic but i only recommend you do that if you're batman yes anyway everybody thanks for listening thanks for watching have good smokes great entertainment and we will see you next time things, children, pets, imaginary friends, metahumans, metatechs, speedsters, tricksters, pranksters, jokers, lobsters, mobsters, photographers, tripods, monopods, cephalopods, decapods, pea pods, construction pods, inspection pods, starships, spaceships, sailing ships, federations of planets, galactic empires, worlds of wizards and witchcraft, worlds of sci-fi, Jedi, pirates, diseases of thieves, plants, bugs, orcs, elves, gnomes, fairies, or chickens named Larry were harmed during the making of this program. If you enjoyed the show, this has been a DR Allen to a one production. If you didn't enjoy this show, this has been a Canadian national all-inclusive choir production. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great day. <laughs>